You know the most amazing, staggering fact about life, which is that it's all written in the same genetic code at Microsoft Basic. And you can actually cut and paste that code from one species into another, and the genes from a monkey work in a cucumber, the cucumber genes work in a cabbage, the cabbage genes work in an elephant, and the elephant genes work in your body too. You know that fact, of course, but most consumers don't. But it's totally amazing, a totally mind-blowing possibility that we can cut and paste in all kinds of novel ways in the future and re-engineer life. So already we have one million transgenic animals made in laboratories in this country every single year. Already we've taken, for instance, the spider's web gene and put it into a, into a goat, uh, which means that we can create a spider's web sticky gunk in the milk of the goat. We can turn that into a new suture material for surgeons, uh, which degenerates inside the body. It's the strongest fiber ever yet been made. It's stronger than Kevlar, yet biodegrades beautifully. Uh, we've been able to create salmon, which grow to f uh, four times their normal size in just 12 months using human genes that are activated by a mouse gene. And the combination of salmon, human, and mouse genes creates this explosively growing, cheap new product. But do you want to eat it? That's the question. Uh, we are finding connections between genes, patterns of genes, and all kinds of characteristics. It's very simple. You do not need to understand what genes do. All you need to do is understand the pattern of someone's genetic code. And you can get it out like a barcode relatively quickly. It will not be long before it's possible for you, maybe in the next five or ten years, to get a printout of your own genetic code, most of it, in about an hour. I do not mean the transcribing every bit of your genes. I simply mean kind of barcode, crude markers, which enable us to compare the patterns of your genes with the patterns of other people, maybe, maybe in places like Iceland, where we already have patterns of genetic code correlated with medical records, personality, and a whole load of other characteristics. And that enables us to make the most extraordinary insights into your potential for the future or the potential of your unborn children. We are discovering genes for speech, genes that are helpful in memory, genes that make it much more likely that you will turn out to be a murderer. Yes, genes which are more common in people on death row and are being used in their defense against electrocution in a number of American states. We're discovering genes that make it more likely that you'll get depressed, genes that make it more likely that you will die of obesity, genes that make it more likely that you will have a stable relationship or that you will have multiple relationships. It may seem far-fetched, but we're discovering all kinds of things. And, of course, it's no surprise if you only look at the way that uh, identical twins grow up in different environments and you see how similar they are, you begin to understand the strength of genetic code. But the question is, are we ready for the impact of this? Are we ready for gene prophecy? You are already using gene information, genetic prophecy, uh, in, in the treatment of, uh, of people with breast cancer, uh, why? Because uh, we're, we're, we're discovering all kinds of genes that make it possible for us to predict who will live and who will die on a particular cancer chemo, or more particularly, who will respond without side effects to the cancer chemo. This is exciting stuff, but also quite hair-raising when you think that the same technology can be used by insurance companies to rule out a whole section of our population from getting insurance cover at all, uh, have a way of identifying people and sacking them out of certain jobs because they don't have the right genes, or if you put them in that environment, they're likely to get sick, and so on. So we are entering a whole new world when it comes to gene prophecy. 